Hello, welcome to The Freak Show, Bumpy McSquigums here. I want to thank you all for joining me as I start up a new series, one I've been excited to start up for quite a while, and I've been debating back and forth whether I wanted to do it, whether I didn't want to do it, but in the end I decided to go for it, and it is Shadowrun Hong Kong by Harebrained Schemes, and it was provided to me by Headhunter. That's right, the guys have, or the guys, the guy, apparently he's plural now, he's got multiple personalities or something, I don't know. The guy that managed to grab Pillars of Eternity for me and send it my way has also supplied Shadowrun Hong Kong, so a thank you to you, good sir, and a shout out. I played with the options, haven't touched the game yet, guys. It just released, and I'm ready to hop in and see it for the first time. So, let's begin. New game. All right, uh, yeah, simple enough. And we'll launch the campaign. I do like the fact that all these games lately have had a lot of abilities to mod and there's several user made community made things and it's pretty cool pretty cool i am also going to be doing the other shadowrun games shadowrun returns and dragonfall or daggerfall i forgot what the other name is i don't know i'm drawing a blank guys it's fine but both of the other two games i will be doing that on stream more than likely directly following valkyria chronicles once that's done i'm going to switch to the shadowrun series so, eventually we'll have all three up on YouTube, and yeah, it's going to be great. So, let's get in here. Get started, and we're going to go with normal difficulty, because I'm scared of doing hard difficulty, because I will lose. Alright, so here we are. And we get to create our character. Alright, am I male or female? Hmm, that's a tough one. Last I checked, I was a male. Alright, now I can be a human, an elf, a dwarf, an orc, or a troll. Alright, and they all have various different stats at the bottom. Generally, and apparently in this as well, generally humans tend to be right down the middle. They are the not great at anything, not terrible at anything class, and usually, I don't know, I have an affinity for humans in a lot of games, but sometimes I like to play around and be something else entirely. Uh, let's see, the elves seem to... does it tell us what they... no, nope, doesn't tell us what they generally uh, like to be. Alright, well, they have 9 body, 11 quickness, 9 strength, 12 charisma, so they're actually better pretty much in all ways to humans, except they don't start with the plus 3 karma at the beginning of the game. So they, the humans get additional skills at the beginning of the game, or points to get skills, so they're a little bit better that way. However, their stats are all, you know, middle of the field. Take a look at the dwarves. They have more body, you know, average quickness, more strength. And average charisma, intelligence, and a bit more willpower. Way more body and orcs, and more strength. Their charisma is a bit lower, their intelligence a bit lower. The rest down the middle. And the good old trolls. They have the most body, a little bit slower on the quickness, a lot of strength. Less charisma, less intelligence, and middle of the line willpower. So... I tend to like playing a Decker, and I'm assuming that's going to be the same class that I'm available to play here. So, I'm not sure. Should I try something else? Maybe I'm going to go with a... Maybe I should do a troll and just murder people with, like, fists and swords and toenails and things. I think that's what we're going to do. So we're going to go troll. We're not going to be very smart, but we're going to just crush things. It's going to be fun. So we could be a street samurai, which is probably what I'm going to end up doing, but we'll see. The mage is available. The Decker, the Shaman, the Rigger, or the Physical Adept. And Adepts are magically active creature or characters who focus their magic internally, seeking to reach their utmost potential physically, mentally, and spiritually. As Adepts unlock new abilities, they become honed physical machines using their magic to enhance their close combat abilities. And we can get key casting, I guess? Or qui casting? That's QI, so I assume it's key. Uh, I think I'm probably going to go with the Street Samurai. Close or ranged combat or both, throwing weapons and a dodge. And body strength and quickness. Now, we're not going to be super fast as a troll, but between the physical adept... Physical adept and the Street Samurai, where we're at. We're going to go with the Street Samurai. I've decided. Alright, let's take a look at our... Oh, cool. Our different looks here. It kind of matches the picture. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Oh, we have chopped off horns here and a bunch of wires in our head. That's not great. Oh, so far I haven't found one that I particularly like. That dude's kind of creepy. 
Hmm. Well, <laughs> there we are. This guy's got a black eye and a broken nose. That's pretty good. Eh, he's messed up. All right, I'm just gonna scroll through this a little bit until I find one that particularly appeals to me. I'm sorry, guys. I think we're gonna go with this guy. He's creepy looking. I like it. Now that would probably indicate he's more of a mage than a fighter, but eh, who cares? We're gonna roll with it. Can we change anything? Oh, we can. All right. Uh, let's see. What is this? This is not changeable. All right. Well, okay, we have the beard. We can change the hair color. All right, I'm, I'm fine with sticking with what we have. That's okay with me. All right, we'll continue on to stats. Karma represents the experience characters earn while running the shadows and achieving goals. Karma is used to improve attributes and skills. An attribute or skill rating can be increased by spending karma equal to the next increment of that rating. Thus, improving your body from 4 to 5 requires you to spend 5 karma points. You have some karma available now to customize your character. Alright. Ooh. This is interesting. So there's body, quickness, strength, intelligence, uh, let's see, willpower, I was going to say wisdom, and charisma. Alright, well body is definitely important being a wonderful, wonderful, gigantic, horrible, awful person like I am. We can get a cyberware affinity. I don't think that's really something we want to do. We can use uh, cyberware such as hand razor cyber weapons. Interesting. Oh, we can, well, that's kind of an interesting uh, thing. Compound attack, barrage, and fray. Uh, I don't know. I kind of like that. I'm not sure if we should do cyberware affinity. And I thought there were other various things that we like unlocked as we went through, but apparently that's not the case. Now here on pistols and other various things like that, there's some stuff. And then strength, please tell me this can be... Ah, good, some melee weapon stuff. Good, 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 good. Alright. This is what I was looking for. Alright, so close combat. The main component, can we unlearn this one? No, we have to keep throwing weapons, huh? That's okay. Alright. We need a rank in melee weapons. And we need close combat to do so. So what is this going to give us? Additional weapon slot, alright. And I think I'll go up to four points in that. And then let's take a look here. Um, melee weapons, thrust increases HP damage plus two, minus 10% to hit. Pierces up to two armor, okay. Critical damage percentage visible, nice. And pommel strike does an additional AP damage, but no HP damage, okay. And I think that's okay for now. We're going to roll with that. I might do one more point in strength. And then we're going to go back up to body. I'll do another point in... Two, oh, we actually only have five points left. All right, well, I won't do another point into body. Willpower. This is for spell casting. Willpower. He used to calculate the chance to hit with hermetic magic spells and key casting all right we don't really need that uh quickness i suppose is not too shabby so what we put we have three points in that what if we did an extra point there and then we just leave it at that it might work all right anything else super important that we absolutely must have i don't think so so let's roll with that biotech Grants a bonus, a bonus to HP hit points uh, recovered when using a med kit. Hey. Alright, well we have one available. I don't really... I suppose if we're going to use a med kit we might... Alright, whatever. We'll get one point in that just because. We'll confirm it and our first name. Um, we'll, go with, we'll go with the good old classic Bumpy McSquigums. And of course our street name is going to be Squigs. Because that's... That's just the way I roll. Alright, and confirm it, and let's see what's available to us. You have one new message. Uh, hi. It's Raymond. I hope I have the right number. Look, I know we haven't spoken in a while. But I need your help. 
Remember the day I took you and Duncan off the streets? I told you that the past is just a story. That if you can just accept that, your past loses all power over you. Yeah. <laughs> I was wrong. I'm on my way to Hong Kong now. To finish something I should have faced a long time ago. And I need you with me. I know we're not blood, and we didn't leave things in a good place. But you and Duncan are the only real family I have. Please, if our past means anything to you, meet me in Hong Kong right away. I'll explain more when you get here. I'm begging you. out of time. Alright, pretty fancy stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Alright, we must go meet him in Hong Kong, but it looks like we might be a tad late. We'll find out in just a moment's time. What has befallen our compatriot? Alright, Raymond Black, the old man gave you a home once, took you and Duncan off the gang-ridden streets of the Barons, sheltered, educated, slapped sense into you both until you almost resembled productive members of society. And then you took off, left it all behind, landed behind bars for a time, tried to start a new life after that. It's been eight years since you've heard Raymond's voice, until, out of the blue, you got this cryptic message, a plea for help. Meet me in Hong Kong right away, and wire to your account enough Nguyen to pay for the flight and then some. The descent is rough. A squall comes out of nowhere, sending a solid sheet of rain punching into the suborbital transport. With a ragged shudder, the plane finally skids to a halt at the edge of the Kek Lap Koch tarmac, okay, uh, an hour and an interminable number of emotionless security checkpoints later, you hail a water taxi to Victoria Harbor. Hong Kong looms ahead, pulsing with energy. All right, let's do it. See what we got. Come on, come on. Load, I command you. There it is. Ooh, it's so much shinier than I was expecting. All right. You step from the churning water taxi to the ponderous rocking of the docks, your stomach lurching at the transition. As soon as you're clear, the captain nods once and steers a small craft back into the harbor. The man never said a word, just handed you a worn brown duffel bag when you stepped on board, filled with gear, some stiff new body armor, and a note. Better safe than sorry. Alright. Above... Smog thick clouds hang low in the sky, reflecting the lights of the city in a nauseating swirl. The wind changes direction more than once, creating a heady stew of aromas diesel, sea salt, street food, and filth. It's all you can do to keep your in flight meal where it belongs. Two figures stand waiting in the dim light of the pier. The first is an orc, lean with in your face muscles and a jaw made to break fists. The second is an elf, one hand resting casually against her hip. Raymond Black is nowhere to be seen. Well, don't you look like crap, Duncan Wu, the closest thing you have to a brother. You haven't seen the man in eight years, still as charming as ever. He grins, green's not really your color, Bumpy. He doesn't go with that nice new armor, I gotcha. As you open your mouth to respond, something shifts alarmingly in your stomach, a liquid bubbling sensation. Tough it out. Uh, don't know what you're talking about. Must be the harbor lights messing with you. Must be. Guess you've still got some of your old fortitude, at least. He laughs. Consider how much synthanol we used to put down. I'd be surprised if you couldn't handle a little chop. Anyway, we gotta go find Raymond. Find Raymond? I thought he'd be here. Never showed up. He's still got that same baritone rasp. Had it since he was 12. Wu developed early. Did you try him on comm? Nah, I've just been walking around the dock shouting his name. He says... It as a joke, but there's a note of concern in his voice. I've been trying him for the last hour. No answer. Were you worried? Yeah, I'm worried. Wu rubs his head. Uh, he's an old man. He's out there alone somewhere. Ray's a smart guy. He can take care of himself. 65 isn't that old, Duncan. I get it. Alright. Okay, now I'm worried. 
I think you should be. The orc bows his head as a voice sounds far away. He's not the same, Bumpy. Raymond hasn't been himself in a long time. How so? He's been restless, staying in his study inside his own head a lot. And he barely sleeps anymore. I've been worried about him, but I haven't figured out what to do about it. He looks up at you and shrugs. And I didn't have to... Or I didn't have a brother to turn to. Hell, wasn't too sure you were even still alive until Raymond managed to track down your number. The woman standing beside him breaks in. We should get going, Duncan. Head back to the meeting point in case your dad shows up. Copy that, Sarge. They're wearing Lone Star body armor. It looks like Duncan Wu's gone private police. Sarge? You his girlfriend or something? Oh, hell no. The corner of her mouth looks upward in amusement. I'm his partner. The woman taps her chest with an armored finger. Carter. I figured I could use some backup. Didn't know what Raid got himself into, and I wasn't sure you were going to show up. It's a tossed-off remark, but there's an undercut of resentment in it. You got something you want to say? Nope. He shakes his head. Hey, look, I'm glad you're here, Bumpy. Seriously, I'm going, but I'm going to need some time to get used to having you around again. It's been a while since I heard from you. Know what I mean? Memories of sleepless nights and lock-up flash by, wondering if you'd ever see Duncan or Raymond again. Wondering if you even wanted to. And then, stepping out into the daylight, suddenly free, the fallout of some obscure corporate reconstruction, or restructuring, a few hundred new yen worth of apology from your former jailers, and a decision to start a new life, to leave the past behind, all of it, until now. I know I've been out of touch, yeah, we'll talk about it later, okay? I had my reasons, can we leave it at that for now? Wu stares at you, his goggles reflecting the harbor lights. Sure. He scans the waterfront, fr frowning. Let's just find Raymond. He was supposed to meet us in the plaza on the other side of this pier. The sooner we find him, the sooner you all can have a big, happy family reunion over dinner. Carter grins, and the sooner I can find a place to get a drink around here. Damn right. Ahead of you, Hong Kong rises serpent... Okay. Hong Kong rises serpent-like from the sea. Government and megacorps coiled together, writhing in their basket of institutionalized corruption. Wow. No one can tell where the snake's body ends and its tail begins. That's what Raymond used to say. Duncan turns and starts down the pier. Carter follows. Alright, I like it. Definitely some really, really good flavor text there, guys. And are they going to follow me? Oh, they are. I'm a big dude with... Oh, okay, cool. Oh, yes! Oh, I love the controls. It's been a long time since I've been in the world of Shadowrun, guys. And i got to say, it's been one of my favorite games that have come out. In the, over the last, I don't know, probably top 10 games in the last 5 years or so. And I only played the first one. Fresh construction is expanding the harbor out into the water. Corporate interests can afford to create new streets. Um, I haven't played the second one, which was supposed to be way better than the first one. Shadow Run Run Returns is what I'm talking about. Followed by Daggerfall, I think it was. Or Dragonfall. Whatever, whatever it is. I don't know. I can't recall whether it's Dragon or Dagger. But either way, the second one was supposed to be phenomenally good, like hundreds of times better than the first one, but I even enjoyed the first one, so I'm excited to get my hands on the second one, replay the first one, and to, of course, play Hong Kong, because it's just sweet, sweet, nice. Alright, so we have a locked thing there, and I imagine we have no way of unlocking it. Nope, doesn't look like it. Alright. Well, we're going to continue on down the pier, and it looks like there is a locked gate that somehow we're going to have to get close enough to to do something. The guard shack at the end of the pier is dark and empty. Duncan gives the gate a push, but it doesn't budge. Huh, well, that was open earlier, Duncan frowns. Looks pretty solid. Shouldn't there be someone here to let us out or something? Guess we'll have to find another way to reach the plaza. Maybe if you bang your head against it hard enough, it'll open. <laughs> I guess we'll have to find another way. Guess so. Strange that there's no one here, though, isn't it? Carter shrugs. Who knows? It's Hong Kong. Not exactly sure how things work around here. Come on, rookie. We can cut through the construction site. I hate it when you call me that. Alright, we're going to have to cut through the construction site. I'll assume it's over here. Oh, we can even zoom in nice and close. Look at the detail, guys. I am very impressed with the graphic upgrade from this, from the original. Well, it says that we can cut through the construction site, but I'm not seeing how we can do that. Oh, a security check. Oh, nice. The gate is locked, but the nearby control panel appears accessible. Carter pulls it open with a metallic screech that pierces your skull, sending a new wave of pain down your churning stomach. She examines the control panel for a minute, then throws Wu a backward glance. 
Looks like there's another way off the docks on the other side of this gate. I think I can bypass the lock. Well, I certainly can't because I'm dumb as dirt, so it's not going to happen. Stand aside and let her work. Hang on, let's poke around here a little first. Well, let's do that. Alright, I just want to take a look. Is there anything that I actually missed? I don't think so. From what I can tell, I didn't miss anything. Well, if I did, I'm sure I'll be yelled at by all of you wonderful people. Be like, you're such a fool, Bumpy. Alright, stand aside and let her work. Carter fiddles with some wires and the door lock hisses open. Got it, let's go. Alright, do we have inventory yet? I don't think so. Oh, well, we have something. We have karma and we do have inventory. And our gear, uh, looks like we have a machete. Yeah! Ready to chop people up. It's pretty good. Movement! It's an enemy! Oh no! Shouting in Cantonese. More shouting in Cantonese. Too quick to catch. Well, apparently we have some Cantonese friends that are not super friendly. The group on the dock was fishing a package out of a speedboat when you surprised them. Now the package is at the bottom of the bay and the speedboat is disappearing into the distance. They close on you, red-faced and yelling. The light of the harbor glints off their weapons as they approach. The leader shouts something in Cantonese, but it's too fast to make out. You're rusty. It's been years since Raymond's house and the language lessons that wouldn't end. The old man never spoke anything but his native language at home. Who speaks with authority? His Cantonese is as solid as ever. He never let it drop. You guys doing some late night fishing? The smuggler smiles. Oh yeah, we're fishing for a-holes. Wu points at their weapons. You're gonna need some better bait. All you gotta catch, all you're gonna catch with that is trouble. Whisper to Duncan. Seriously, did they teach you that in rent a cop school? Try out your Cantonese. We're just <laughs> passing through. Why don't you put the guns away? Lone Star, lay down your weapons. Ah, uh, we're gonna whisper to Duncan. He turns to you with a smile star starting on his face, then he thinks better of it. Turns back to the smugglers. Wu flashes his badge. Lone Star, put the guns down. The smugglers squint at Wu's badge, then smiles at his friends. Never seen a badge like that before. Either it's fake or you're some kind of security guard. He grasps his rifle. Either way, this ends the same. I think he's done talking. Alright, you are now in turn-based combat mode. Each character on your team has an action pool. Spend these action points on movement attacks or using spells or items. Once your team's turn is complete, the enemy will move and attack. Additional tutorial information is available from the reference guide, which can be accessed in the upper right corner of your PDA menu. Alright. Okay guys, we get to go out and do some murderous things. Oh, I'm so I'm so excited. My first combat. Mm, it's gonna be good. Do they all have guns? Because I hope not. I don't like getting shot. This dude definitely has a gun. Alright, let's see. Where can we go that we won't get murdered by horrible, awful things? Well, I guess this is going to be the first place we move. And, let's see here. Overwatch? We can overwatch with... Oh, we can overwatch with a melee weapon. That is so good. Alright, Duncan's clearly got some sort of uh, SMG or something. We're going to roll out over here. And we're going to try to do some pew-pew uh, shooting. There's 83% there. Oh, there's a thug hiding behind that, that box there. That's pretty cool. Alright, let's go for this one. Go for the mage. Killing off the mage is always a good good idea. Oh, that's unfortunate. We can't get behind cover with her. Well, not safely anyway. Alright, what do we have here? We increase the aim. We can do a mana ball. A magical, magical explosion that pierces up to two armor. We can strip armor. We can heal a wound or... We can do quite a few different things, actually. 46% damage... I'm going to roll out a little bit, but we're going to try to stay further away from the gunner. 67%, maybe we can kill him off. And, oh, we missed. It's unfortunate. Alright, well, we gave it a shot. Oh, this dude's got a gun, too. Aw, she just ate 8 damage, and there's a fireball. At least she missed, too. Here comes the melee thug with his, like, cybernetic arm. Oh, he just got cracked up the side of the dome. And the dude totally missed. Alright, Squigs, get around behind and do some slashy attack and stuff. Yeah! 9 damage, not really as impressive as I was hoping. Alright, we're going to fire on the mage again, and one more time, and down she goes. We can now get behind cover here, and try to hit this goon. We did very little damage there. Alright, oh, we got shot in the butt, that wasn't good. I definitely misplayed there. Oh, but the shotgunner guy continues to miss. Alright, well then I think, um, 
I'm gonna go for the kill here. I got it, and then I'm gonna run down over over here probably. Let's see how that works out. Duncan's still got some work to do here. We go with burst fire. Let's do that. Okay, a little bit of damage done, and we're wounded, but not as wounded as good old Bumpy is over there, or Squigs, as, as he's belovedly known. Alright, we have a 59 and a 60% chance. How far out can we heal from? Oh, we can heal from pretty far away. There we go, 17 health increase. This dude's like, maybe we chose properly here. The shotgunner missed again. We're going to go and close with this guy. Try to wreck his face a little bit. Here we go. Flanked and 52%. 2x crit damage. Not too shabby. 82% or 94. We're going to go with the flanked attack of 94% and down he goes. Very nicely done. Alright. If we move here, be behind cover and apparently that was a double move we just did. Didn't feel like it. Well, I don't really want to do anything else right yet, so let's go over to Duncan and let him do some cappage. And that's it. That's all we needed. We survived. We got nine health back. And we're alive. No, not sure. I don't recognize their tattoos. All right, we're going to meet up with our boys. We definitely got wrecked a little bit there, guys and gals, but eh, that's okay. That's okay. We're going to... Take a look around. Is there anything to loot? I'm not seeing anything right now. There's a security checkpoint. Ah, there's something to loot. Alright, here's a pickup over here. And an illegal street drug made from the leaked kamikaze formula adds plus one body, plus one strength, and plus one willpower for five rounds. Every time the user is attacked, strength increases. Uh, take. Does that mean I'm physically going to take it, or does it mean... Okay, we picked it up. Okay. That's what I was hoping. I didn't want to actually take it yet. Alright, let's go to the security checkpoint. Another gate panel. This one's been vandalized and busted up good. A real nightmare of a repair job. Who stares at the fence considering? Loops and whirls of razor wire glittered in the lamplight. Looks edged with monofilament. The corporations here don't screw around. Duncan and I have hopped plenty of fences before. It'll be fine. Why don't we just cut ourselves an opening? Hmm, I guess we better find another way through. She shakes her head. Even if you could, it'd snap back on you. Ever seen a high-tension wire whip through a human body? You don't want to. Duncan nods in agreement. We aren't touching it. How about it, Carter? Think we can get the gate open? Eh, she winks at him. What do you think? She eyeballs the job. It'll take a few minutes, though. Frowning, she leans in, clo or leans in to get a closer look at the mangled fuse box. A few seconds later, she starts pulling wires and yanking fuses, a look of intense concentration on her face. She's competent. I thought she was a mage. And Cantonese, Bumpy. He sounds like Raymond when he does that. What's with the lecture, Wu? Cantonese. The pen of my aunt, or aunt, is sitting on the end of the table. Satisfied? I thought she was a mage. There we go. She is. Carter likes how things work. She used to be on the bomb squad. He continues in Cantonese. We speak only Cantonese from now on, just like we did when we lived with Raymond's. Those endless drills are about to pay off. I think that's necessary. It's Ray's mother tongue from here on out. It's coming back. Won't be a problem. Alright, it's coming back. Won't be a problem. So be it. He nods once satisfied and then turns his back and scans the horizon. At least you can still handle yourself in a fight. Did you doubt it? Nope. The sounds between you gets louder, heavier. Then it's broken by a sudden wailing screech. Wu's hand goes to his holster. The screech is replaced by the sound of grinding wheels. Glancing over to the console, you see Carter grinning back at you. Got it! Alright, so be it. it. We have the gate now opened, and it looks like we are about to move on to... Well, I'd say greener pastures, but I don't think that's actually an appropriate phrase here. Nothing green looking here. The light from the nearby vendor stall stabs into your eyes, triggering a throbbing ache in the back of your skull. You stop short, squinting as rough voices drift in on the wind. The tattooed smuggler. Where's everyone else? Where's the damned shipment? I haven't seen them yet. We just got here. The voice becomes irritated. 
long way is probably waiting for us, so we can haul it out of the boat for him, that lazy bastard. Let's just hang out here, let him find us. Carter's voice, or Carter keeps her voice low. Looks like we're on a stroll through Smuggler Central. These gangers probably don't know we're here. We could just slip by. Or we could clip them. They're already looking for us. It might be better to take them out now while we've still got the element of surprise on our side. Hmm. While unaware, hostiles, while unaware, hostiles are on screen, press the holster button to enter turn-based combat mode. Hmm. Okay. That's a pretty interesting little dealie. Alright, looks like we're up against three. How banged up am I? Oh, I'm, I'm relatively hurt here. It's not great. Um, I should be able to still survive it, I would assume. Alright, we're going to go move the crate, I guess. I mean, is that a thing that we really want to do? I'm not entirely certain. But, it is simply what it is, and we are about out of time for episode one, folks. Hopefully you enjoyed. I am going to be continuing this a little bit more regularly. This is going to be one of my regularly scheduled programs. And don't worry, guys. Everything else is going to continue on slow and steady like it has been. Plus, well, you should be seeing um, the announcement video, or the sign-up video for Battle Brothers Season 4 coming up. And on Monday, that will be returning as well. So lots of stuff happening, guys, here on the free show. Hopefully you're enjoying it. If you are, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share it. And I will be back in just a bit with episode two of Shadowrun Hong Kong. Until then, my name is Bumpy McSquiggums. Thank you for stopping by the Freak Show, and I will see you later.